Hello and welcome to my lab. My name is Dr. Samuel Snow. I'm a professor at LSU and I'm here to do a demonstration of density and photochemistry with you to teach you something about how we deal with water when we are looking at treatment and understanding of the quality of water. So this activity is designed specifically for our LSU Engage activity this year, but I hope that anybody else who comes across this video may also have a good time using this activity. If that describes you, then look in the description of this video for a list of materials we're going to use today. Let's get into it. First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about light. So when we think about light, you probably have heard of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have different wavelengths of light, which correspond to different colors. This means how waves are, the waves of light are passing through the the air, how many waves there are that are coming through per time tells us what color it is. So we have a red laser pen, we have a green laser pen, and we have a violet laser pen that shines just about into the ultraviolet range. And you can see on this little graphic here, those correspond to different wavelengths. Now we can use ultraviolet light to disinfect water and to treat water. So this UVC here, this range, that's the type that we use sometimes for treating water. Now, what we're dealing with today, we saw the red. Red would be a laser that's shining that type of color. We saw the green, that's usually for 532 nanometers if you wanted to put a number on it. And we also saw the violet, which is just on the range where we can almost we're almost unable to see it because our visible, our, our naked eye cannot see stuff really very much below 400. So those are the three that we're using today. And so instead of looking on the treatment side, we're really looking on the side of the spectrum where we use this light to understand what's in our water better. So that's gonna be the, the thing we're gonna learn today is how this works, how this helps us understand what's in our water. So. There's two concepts. One is light absorption. And I have a little demonstration for you here in just a moment. You see on the slide here that the light, as it's passing through some fluid, gets dimmer. So some of the light has been absorbed by whatever chemicals are in that water. When it gets absorbed, that happens based on how much of the chemical is in the water. So if you're absorbing more light, that means there are more molecules in there more of this chemical, more of the contamination, and we can understand then how much contamination there is by measuring how much light we have before and then how much light we have after. So here, let me switch to our second screen, and you'll see I have a little cuvette, and if I shine a red laser pen through it, it goes pretty much straight through, and we can shine it from this angle, and we can see if my finger was not in the way. You can see that it's essentially shining all the way through and illuminating the cap at the back. Okay, now let's try that with a different color. Green, also shining all the way through. You can see the nice little laser beam going through. And last, we'll try with our violet laser. This one seems to be making a little bit of color coming through there. And when we shine it through this way, it's not making it all the way through. You see, it's it can shine up against the, the wall, but it doesn't go far enough through. So that color is being absorbed, that violet color is being absorbed by that liquid. So one of the things we could do is take a look at all the different liquids we had and check to see which one's absorbing that much light. Then we can identify what's in our little cuvette. Now, another thing that happened in that demonstration was it looked like maybe we had some fluorescence happening. This is another thing we're going to talk about. So fluorescence can be used just like absorption to understand how much of something is in our water. If you give the right type of laser, sometimes you will excite a molecule, a chemical. And this is very much like what we see when we have neon colored highlighters 
or we have neon lights. And even if you go to maybe some sort of a cosmic bowling or some, something with a black light, if you've ever heard of the black lights, you'll see objects fluorescing. In fact, you see I have this violet pen and you can see it on my skin, but when I put it on my lab shirt, it becomes blue. It might be hard to see the difference there, but it's shining a little brighter. This lab coat is actually fluorescing a blue color. So what happens is you excite it with a very high energy color. So a low wavelength, that means more waves hitting. So that means higher energy. And then this fabric, for example, emits back another color out. And that emission corresponds to a lower energy color. Some energy is lost along the way in the transformation, and then it's sent back out as a lower energy color. So that's fluorescence, and we can use that to identify certain types of contaminants in our water. Okay, with that, we're ready to do our demonstration. So I'm going to have this little sketch here of our density tower that we're going to assemble so as a reference while we go through it. And most of the work I'm going to do here is going to be on uh, right in front of you here with our different chemicals. Okay, so I've told you already we have several different several different uh, fluids that we're going to work with. We've got rubbing alcohol, we've got vegetable oil, we've got water here, we've got maple syrup, we've got dish soap, and we have honey. And I almost kept the right order there. We also have food color, three different kinds. And this should be this uh, McCormick's Nature's Inspiration Food Colors. This is actually very important that we have this particular type, because if you don't, we don't have the same molecules that are going to fluoresce in our activity. OK, so we have all of those things. We also have syringes to help fill our bottles. Which I, I realize I need to go get one. It's, it's uh, right there. I'll get it. And what we want to do is assemble in a cup, a clear cup, or something like it. We, what we want to do is assemble a density tower and then check what we can see with the lasers as they go through. Before we get started, we do need to add food coloring to a few of these items. In particular, we want to do it for the alcohol. We want to do it for the vegetable oil so that we can make a, a nicer color that distinguishes from our other things. And we want it to do, do it with our water. Now, some of these dyes do not dissolve very well with the other ones. So I will say that I want us to do blue with the water, okay? We want to do the berry color with the oil. And we want to do the sunflower color with the rubbing alcohol. OK, so as we get started, you want to get several vessels ready, several of these cups ready that are mixed with the color so that then we can assemble everything all at once and then have fun playing with the lasers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start using my blue, the blue packet, and I'm going to put just a little bit here in my water container. I'm just going to tap a little bit in. We don't need a lot. In fact, if we get too much, that's probably going to be uh, difficult for us to see what we want to see. So I've just got some water here. This is tap water. You can take it wherever you want from whatever tap water source you have. I'm just going to add it a little bit in here. This does not have to be exact. We want to stir it. You can use something around you to stir it if you like. I might grab a syringe in a moment to finish stirring. Or use my finger, I suppose. So we have a nice little blue there. I also recommend, by the way, that you have some paper towels handy because it does get a little messy. Okay, so we have blue water ready. I'm gonna put that over here. We also want yellow, yellow food coloring in our alcohol. 
our isopropanol is the fancy term here. And again, we don't need a lot. I'm just going to tap a little bit in, a little bit of powder there. If you get some on your fingers, be careful because that's going to get a lot of dye all over the place. So we're just going to add some of our rubbing alcohol here. I've got 70%. This works. 90% um, would also work. So we're going to add this here. Give it a good stir. And set it aside. And we also want to color the oil because I realized that the oil color in our vegetable oil is very close to the color in here. So we want to set it apart a little bit. So we're going to just do a tiny bit of the pink dye. Oh, that was maybe too much. Really does not take much of the pink stuff for the oil. If you add, if you add a lot, you can always remove some or just fill it up with a little bit more oil. So I'm just going to pour in some oil and then find a something to stir it with. See how this does. I'm going to grab a syringe and we can stir it with a syringe. So this is another thing you should have with you with your activity set. A syringe. You don't even have to use a syringe if you don't want to. There's other objects we can use. But today, for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and use this you could potentially use a spoon for everything we're using the syringes for. You could use a pipetter or any sort of thing. So now we see we've got a little bit of pink coloration in the, in the oil now. So that'll help us distinguish it from, from the, other, the other stuff. I may even add a little more pink in there later. We'll see. Okay. Now, we're ready to assemble our density tower. We're gonna to do that in this new clean cup. So if you notice here, I've got most of everything in order. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start with the honey and go from honey to syrup, to the soap, to water, to oil, and last to the alcohol, okay? And we're going to fill this, this cup, with layers of each of these. Now, we only want about half an inch of a, la of a layer. So I'm just going to squeeze some honey in. The first few are easy. Um, we don't have to worry too much about them mixing together. And the last few we're going to use a syringe for because we don't want them to mix, mix each other's layers up and then have too much mixing so we can't distinguish them. Okay, so there's our honey. Now, it's a similar color here, but I think we should be able to see the distinction. Honey is the most dense of these fluids. So now I'm adding, carefully, I'm adding some syrup. And we see that ends up just floating there right on the surface. And hopefully you can start to see we're getting different layers happening for us. Next up is our soap. So here, again, we just want to gently pour it in. Try to let it glide on the top without spilling, without uh, flowing down too deeply. And you can start seeing, once I get a little more in here, Again, this is a similar color, so maybe you have a, a blue dish soap that might turn out a little better for you, or a green one. We ended up with orange here. Um, certainly you could use a different color and that might help you see it a little better. But as I get more here, you should start seeing this, these different layers, distinct layers, and that's because there's a difference in density. The syrup is heavier per volume, so if you had the same volume of syrup and the same volume of soap, the soap is going to be lighter. 
So now you can see we have three different layers, the honey, the syrup, and the soap now. Next up is water. And we've got this blue water, and here we want to be careful. We don't want to splash the water into the soap and mix it because we know soap and water mix and we get bubbles and all of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the syringe here and just carefully take some water. Just take a bunch of water and then I'm going to slowly and carefully add it to this on top of the soap. Now again, you could use a spoon or something for this, but I recommend using the syringe so that you can control how quickly it's adding. You want to do it rather slowly. So I'm going to do a few of these and then we should start seeing that layer of colored water floating on top of the soap layer. You see there we've got a little mixing happening. We don't really want that. So we just got to be nice and slow and careful here. All right, so now we see several different layers. We're done with the water. And next up is our oil. Now the oil, it's a, the pink color is not, not staying very well, but I think it'll work. We're going to add oil on top of the water. And you've probably seen this at home before, but it makes nice bubbles on top of the water. And so this one should, should be a nice layer to see. I will say that, especially if you're using the syringe, just be careful not to push it out too fast because some the oil kind of interacts with the syringe a little funny and sometimes it shoots out pretty hard. And we don't want it to, you know, even though it will float, we don't want it to cause the layers underneath it to mix because remember there's water and soap down there and if they start mixing um, you know we, we just simply don't want we want to keep them from mixing but you see now even though this pink color is not not perfect we can see a little bit of it and it's a separate distinct layer from the water Ooh. there we go so now that's enough oil. And last, we have our rubbing alcohol. So one last time, I'm going to use our syringe here. And you know what? I'm going to get a new syringe, and I recommend you do the same. When I just pulled up some, some, uh, some of the alcohol in here, I noticed that it got kind of cloudy. The water, or excuse me, the, the alcohol and the oil are mixing together to make a lot of bubbles, small oil bubbles in here. So I'm just gonna get a new syringe. Um, you could potentially just pour, pour it straight in, but I'm gonna grab a new syringe and show you. Make sure we do this nice and carefully here. Now look at this difference. I have I have this one that I just did with the new syringe, and you compare that to the one with the oily syringe, and you can really see that the oil and the alcohol mixed, and we, we don't want that. So we wanted to put it in gently, and so we're going to add it very carefully here. And we should end up with one more layer going to be on top of that oil once we're done. So just take maybe three of these. That's about 30 milliliters if you're counting. can certainly be approximate. We don't have to be exact here. See, I'm getting maybe too much mixing over there that I don't really want. But hopefully, it's going to separate back out. 
and we can see the distinct layers. I'm just going to add a little bit more. And we'll see what we can get. Okay, so my, my density tower looks like we're having a little bit of issue with the uh, oil and the alcohol, but it works. Okay, we can see these different, these different fluids in there have different colors. Now, the fun part is to play with the lasers. And this is an activity that I'm going to let you have some fun with. There's two things we can do. First, we can take a look at how far the light's going to travel through each one. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but you can look at it from the side and see if it's coming all the way through. So the first layer is coming all the way through and shining on my glove. Let me see if I can, there you go. And you can bring it down and see, does it shine through each one? And the red one goes through almost every single one of them. This one seems to not shine very much. So the which layer is that? You can also take a look if you shine it down from above. And you can kind of see where that laser is being absorbed and you can see a little bit of the laser. Now the interesting part becomes when you have more of the light being absorbed. Now these colors are mostly reds and then there's the blue and that means that they're absorbing other colors but letting red light through. So if we take green we should see something different. When we take it to the top we see the light is coming through I'm going to move this a little bit. If we take a look, the light coming through is shining straight onto our napkin. It's going through most of them. That one seems to be absorbing most of it, or all of it. And even though we see it coming through, except that maybe we have some battery issues here. You should be able to see which ones it goes through and some of them perhaps it doesn't. The, the This green one, I do apologize that the batteries are uh, not functioning here. The green one goes through most of them and the most interesting is the violet one. The violet one, we can see some fluorescence. So this first one here, you see it shining a different color. It's shining yellow through our top liquid, that through the alcohol. That yellow is a fluorescent signal. If we go down a notch, we see it's actually kind of a violet color. Whereas we have yellow shining out, the violet, that's just absorbing and scattering some light. We go down to the, the blue, and we can see that one's shining a blue light out instead of violet. We go down further, and they start absorbing all of the light. And you can see it's not going very far through. If you shine it from above, we can see the different layers and how far the light is traveling through. And you can see here one layer that the light just simply stops. It's being absorbed. All of the light is absorbed. You can also see if we do this, that sometimes it's, it looks like it's shining yellow and sometimes it's shining more the violet. You can see the violet being scattered by the other particles. So here we see fluorescence and absorption at work. So feel free to, to play with them and play with them individually. So even if we're not looking at the density tower, for example, the yellow here, you can see when I shine into it, it turns a yellow color. When we have this one, it's just the violet color, or, or maybe a blue fluorescence. And in the blue, we have the violet color. Or 
perhaps. Actually, no, that's a, that's a red fluorescent. See that? That's, that's really neat. So that was harder to see in our density tower because it didn't add enough water. So we see a, a bright red fluorescence through that one. You can also try this if your laser pens are working. You can try the green, and you, uh, some of them will fluoresce with the green, but not all. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope your batteries last longer than mine, and please let me know in the comments if you have any questions.